It's a race. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this much left. Ah, I win. Nice shot. This time I have something new for you, dear viewer, and for the 87 Toyota MR2 Rallycross car. Techno Toy Tuning has been gracious enough to give us a little discount on some sweet interior bits for this wee little beast. And all I owe them in return is showing you, our 12 or so loyal viewers, how to install said bits. This time we'll be focusing our attention and the lens of my phone on the T3 harness bar for the AW11. In a previous episode, you may have seen me finding it quite a chore to fit a Corbo racing seat into this car and have any room to sit or drive or breathe. I decided that I would instead get a harness bar along with some top-notch harnesses and plant myself down in the stock seat. In other cars, especially old vintage Toyotas like, you know, every car that I seem to own, the structure of the car can make a harness bar seem kind of frightening because they're sort of built like soda cans. And if the roof collapses in a rollover, you want to be able to tilt your body, you know? I mean, you're not going to do it. It's just going to do it for you. If that roof was to come down and you were wearing a normal seat belt, you would tilt out from the direction of the shoulder belt, right? If you're wearing a harness, not so much tilting going on. In other cars, my Corolla FX16, for example, I've opted, even after installing the four-point harnesses, to not wear them. But the AW11 MR2 is essentially its own roll cage. The midsection, where the T-tops go between the A and the B pillar, is basically just tubular steel. And the pillars themselves are enough to keep the car from being smooshed in a rollover at 45 mile per hour or less, which is generally the speeds of rollovers at Rallycross. We aren't pulling you know, massive speeds, massive Gs, you end up just hooking a tire wrong in a rut and then a car can go over. I will say it's impossible to roll an MR2. I believe I've seen one roll, but it would be harder than most cars. So that's my sound reasoning for feeling okay with the harness bar and just having harnesses in this car. If any of you are safety buffs and know for any reason why this car should not be joined with this harness bar in holy matrimony, then speak now in the comments and... And, you know, that's your piece. But do let me know. So the first task to getting this bar in the car was just unwrap it. It's a race! Yeah. T3 packages and ships all their products in a top-notch way. This one was wrapped in plastic, and then the whole box was surrounded uh, on the inside by s expanding foam. There's no way that any of these components could shift around during shipping. It's always fun unboxing Techno Toy stuff and seeing how well it's packaged. So Miles and I had a little race to see who would win the unwrapping, and I won because I cheat. Here are the tools required to do this job. 7.30 seconds, Allen wrench, and a 14 millimeter wrench. These are for the upper bolts on the harness bar, and then the 3 eighths Allen for the bolts that connect to the original mounting points for the seat belts. We then took some time to survey the situation and consult the instructions, and there weren't any. But there was some really good hardware, and it all seemed straightforward enough. So we just figured we'd make it up as we went, and then share our findings with you. So Miles got to business, taking out the entire center console. I've read that it can be retained with this bar, but, you know, I don't need a center console. It's, look at it. It's a race car. It's getting tractor parts put on it. Race car. And then after removing the center console, you should pop out your seat belts because, again, race car. No seat belts. Harnesses. Mmm. Race car. Once you remove the cover that gives you access to the seat belt reel, you can get a 14 millimeter socket on there and pop the reel out. Then take off the top cover from the plastic where the seat belt comes out. You'll find a split in the plastic that you can slide the belt through. And now you should be able to remove the entire seat belt. Race car. Then the female end of the belts also comes off easily from the tunnel in the middle of the car, another 14 millimeter bolt, and it's out of there. You may have to unplug it from the seats if you've never taken your seats out. There should be a plug on the seat. Uh, I, I think it goes to a harness underneath the seat. Uh, it's supposed to ensure that your seat belt is buckled, but race car! 
So now that all the belts are out of the way, I recommend that you assemble the harness bar unit outside of the vehicle and then put it in. We tried first by assembling it inside. Didn't line up, didn't go the way we wanted. Having it all assembled loosely on the outside of the vehicle made it easier to get everything tightened down once it was inside. It'll help ensure the alignment of the top bolts specifically while you're attempting to bolt the harness bar down to the old seat belt mounting locations. Make sure you leave all of the bolts loose as you put things in and just put in the two top bolts on either side. Let's not put in the bottom bolts yet. We're going to have to put harness mounts in there along with the bolts. I'll explain that in a minute. Just the top bolts lightly fastened for now. The top bolts are pretty tricky because of the angle. My advice is to get in the car and look straight on at them and then you'll see exactly how it needs to go. If you try to do it from outside the car, it takes forever and you, you because you think you've got the right angle and you do not. So now the harness bar is loosely in the car, we can take on the next step of wrapping the webbing of the shoulder belts around the harness bar itself. I've never had five point harnesses before. I've never had any harness that utilized the bar and wrapping the webbing. I've always had bolt in harnesses. So needless to say, I had to watch a couple YouTube videos myself of how to wrap these things. And I'll put the links to the best ones down in the comments so you can check them out for yourself. But hopefully I do a good enough job explaining that you won't need them. In this case, I've gone for three inch belts from Racequip with a cam lock hub. I've used plenty of belts in my adventures in co-driving over the past couple of years, and I fell in love with the cam lock system after driving way too many other cars that had the old style buckle system with all the different parts and pieces that you gotta, you know, put together. The old style is tried and true, and there's nothing unsafe about it. They're just obnoxious. The cam lock makes things so simple especially if you're sharing a car with another driver. I've got other tips and tricks for driving one car with two drivers at events, and I'll share those later here in the episode. To me, the first step in fitting these harness straps is to absolutely make sure that your seat is in the right position for the primary driver. We'll adjust the straps accordingly with slack to fit other drivers at the end, but for now, looking out for numero uno. Moi. First, we'll set up our lap belts. They bolt to the old lap belt seat belt mounting positions. So that means that the one closest to the door is actually under the harness bar that you just installed. But no fear, we didn't put those bottom bolts in yet, did we? No, we did not. After roughly adjusting this side for proper length, slip the lap belt mount in between the harness bar and the frame of the car and line up all the holes. Send your racing hardware bolt through and loosely tighten the bolt down. The lap belt strap that comes from the inside of the car is much easier with no harness bar in the way. Simply insert the hardware through the harness mount and again, loosely tighten. If you're doing belts on both sides of the car, now might be a good time to move on to the other side and repeat what you just did. Since I was only putting this in for the driver at the moment, I moved on to cinching it all down. The manufacturer's recommended safety instructions when bolting in lap belts is to make sure they are at a 45-ish degree angle from the floor. They need to retain a proper angle to ensure a safe fit across the lap. With the strap mount held in position, go ahead and tighten down the bolts. Now have a seat and slap on your new lap belt. Things up down there. Here we go. Moment of truth here. There are many moments of truth. That one's it's way too far over. Buckle. There we go. Yeah, we need the red pulley guy on it. Let's tighten them up some. I'm gonna get this cam right in the middle. It's too far. Pull some slack out. Clack, clack. Strap down. It's kind of hard to do in here, honestly. Yeah. There we are. Lap strap. Check. If all feels well, then move on to the upper bolts on the harness bar that mount to the chassis and tighten them down as well. Then hit the bolts and nuts that hold the center bar to the side pieces. Congratulations! Your harness bar is now fully installed! It took me a bit of trial and error, but I figured out that after removing the bolt down buckle, I would need to pull a lot of slack out of the shoulder straps to get them mounted properly. Once the length was determined, it was simply a matter of properly wrapping the strap around the bar. To do this, you bring the strap back through the bottom rear of the buckle, then loop it down through the top front. Then it goes back over the top to the rear and goes through backwards. This is enough to tightly secure the strap onto the bar. Just make sure you have all your slack pulled through first 
because you won't get a second shot at tightening it once you've made all your passes through the buckle. Second verse... Same as the first. Test both shoulder straps for length, and then you can move on to the submarine strap. The MR2 does not have a great place for mounting the submarine strap. Even though the substrap doesn't have to really take on a great deal of strain, it's still nice to know that it probably won't rip out of thin sheet metal if ever you should need it for its intended purpose, which is to keep you from sliding out from under the lap belts. But nevertheless, I made do with a hole in the OEM seat support. I went out and got a grade 8 bolt, nut, and big-ass fender washers, Then using a magnet, some patience, and some very light breathing, I managed to thread the bolt through the backside of the hole and get all the hardware for the strap in place. Then all that was left was to click it all up and see how it fit. Now, I'm going to link them up. I'll go over that at the end. Their straps. Now, everything's loose. So I'm going to tighten my lap belt, number one. There she is. Good and tight. Now, now that the lap's tight, we can tighten the shoulders. Shoulders are tight. Oh man, this is really something. Car that I have having proper five point harnesses in it. The submarine strap is tight right now, and the uh, that means that the buckle here is not going to rise up at all and let these lap belts come up higher and higher. The four point harnesses uh, you may have seen out there, that's what I have in my previous rally cross car and they just they just keep coming up and up and up as you go on throughout the day, you tighten them down. And, but this one, it can't go anywhere because that submarine strap's got it, right? And it also keeps you from sliding out of the seat like that. That's why it's called submarine strap. It's anti-submarine, keeps you from <whistles> submarining, which means going under the belts. Let's plug her back in again real quick to demonstrate the proper method for hopping out of here when you have a co-driver. Anyway, you finish your run. Oh yeah, you're all full of adrenaline. You come in, you fling open the door, and the first thing you wanna do before you unbuckle this thing is you wanna pull up on these shoulder guys, and then you wanna pull up on your lap belt guys. Right, pull them in. Maybe with two hands at a time. Not sure why they didn't come with little pull straps on them, but that'd be handy if they had them. And then you can undo your center cam lock now you're ready for the next person to get in and if they're a really short person right if you're a really tall person they're a really short person then you're going to want to really undo them because they're going to move that seat forward and they're going to need to latch everything back down again so now when they get back in all they have to do is tighten the laps tighten the shoulders hit it this was a pretty simple process honestly and altogether it probably didn't take me as much time as it has taken me to edit this video if you did it straight through I'd say that you could have the harness bar installed with one harness in two to two and a half hours. Even if you had no idea what you were doing when you started. Hell, that's, that's how I start everything, really. So kudos to T3, that's Techno Toy Tuning, for making a product that just works the way that you expect it to and looks twice as good as it does in the pictures on the website. If I was the type of person who built, like, actually nice cars this would for sure be on my list of upgrades. In my case, it just helps to add a bit of legitimacy to an otherwise completely illegitimate race car. In the next MR2 video, I'll be showing you how to install another such feel-good type upgrade from T3, and then maybe we'll be able to call this series on the interior of the car, The Office, completed. Then we'll move on to some much-needed mechanical work as we head towards the first Kansas City region rally cross event of the season. First one got rained out, so we got a little extra time to work on the car and, you know, to shoot and edit video. What am I doing with my life? So, until then, uh, make sure you give a like and a subscribe and, uh, you know, click a bell and, you know, all that stuff. And, hey, we'll see you next time. Oh, my ass hurts. God, that stool is awful. Uh, I mean, honestly, sitting on the floor would be better.